something in anti-embolic stocking that you might okay. wear to prevent DVTs or something. This right here, just kind of a little bit of an aside, is a stump shrinker, and it doesn't have a lot of pull this way, but it has lots of elastic this way. So we put these on limbs, and then usually we'll double them up. If my residual limb's down here, we we'll double it up, and we'll be providing compression to try to force pull it up. So they will occasionally use something like this to try to help if somebody's got a really edematous limb, or if they haven't been wearing their compression, their stump shrinker, um, you'll end up getting this kind of ball of fluid at the bottom and then the top of their leg will be normal shape. So they may use this to try to get it back into a more normal shape so that they can start wearing their, their stump shrinker again. Mm -hmm. So that's not stockinette, even though it looks a little bit like it. You see the difference is these little ribbies and these are specific links. These are much more expensive so too. What is that actually called? Stump shrinker. Everyone just calls them stump brain? shrinkers. Can they really call them that? Yep. Is it permanent, or does their body eventually start, start circulating that back up on, from the residual end, or are they always have? Well, to we're have talking that specifically on? about uh, amputees. Yeah. Are they um, always going to have to wear that? We tell most of our patients that. Um, when they're not in their prosthesis, they should probably have a stump shrinker on. Always, forever. But a lot of them, their bodies will adapt and they won't need them. But it doesn't take much. If you've got a really good fit on your prosthesis, those are custom molded. If you have a really good fit, it doesn't take much swelling for your prosthesis not to fit anymore. So a lot of people are going to sleep in something like that. or You know, honestly, you'll see a lot of people that stop wearing them. People that never are going to be candidates for prosthetics are often poorly compliant anyway, so they stop wearing them. But they're just going to have swelling, which is like, they yeah, are right? going to have swelling, That's right? Bad. But they got a lot of things that aren't good. <laughs> um, shrinkers, we call them shrinkers usually. If around the patients, we won't always call them stump shrinkers. But you know, the prosthetist usually does. The prosthetist usually calls it a stump shrinker. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a good PC term for that. I just call them shrinkers. Your shrinker, your residual limb shrinker. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a bad connotation. I guess it just depends on the person. On how depends on the person and how PC your world is. Some people's worlds are more PC than others. I tried to be cognizant but not overly PC. You don't ever want to use things that could be considered derogatory. You know, it's not, it's not always just the patient that gets offended. You know, if I'm joking around with my patient and he's not offended but everybody else in the room is offended, then I still have to be careful. You know, I have friends that call themselves gimps and crips and, you know, rolling whatever, and I would never, ever say that. They can say it all they want. But I will see people start making those kinds of jokes. I don't ever make a joke about you know just how much money. You think about how much money you're going to save on shoes when you're in a wheelchair. Even the, the patients will use it. You're held to a different level of accountability as a clinician. We have a patient that's a below the knee amputee, and he gets really annoyed if you call it a residual limb and not a nub. Yeah. <laughs> See? So, you'll so run it's into just all depends on the patient. Everybody has their own little coping mechanisms. I have a patient. I've had about half a dozen patients name them. Don't call it a stump or a residual limb. It's it's Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> call it Bobby. Don't use those big words with me. What are you talking about? Residual yeah. limb. I don't, they don't even like they don't like that word because they don't know what it means. You're, you're gonna I'm gonna start like there. And if yeah. your patient says see then the problem becomes though is am I gonna be able to keep it all straight in my head? Right. Who wants me to call them by their first name and who prefers last names? Right. I don't have to remember because I call everybody by their last name. I call everybody Mr. or Ms. and I don't have to remember. So, and then they say, just call me Amy. And I say, I will try, but I am probably going to continue to call you Ms. Liss because it's a habit I've gotten into over the last 20 years. Does he call you Ms. All right, so here's my machine. Pretty idiot proof. I get colored wires. I get colored nubbies and my colored wire goes into my colored nubby. Oh, that makes it easy. All right. It's 
conically shaped, so there is a top and a bottom. All right, who wants to come pull their chair up and use your arm? I've done this before. I had on my leg, well, I had been an operation on my knees, thing, so I put it on my other leg. So I'm going to look at her skin, make sure it's all okay, not a lot of open wounds. I might worry about her ring, might have her take it off. I'm going to put some stockinette on there so she doesn't get all sweaty inside here or have to exchange sweat with the person that was in here before her. There's lots of different sizes of these things. I want that limb above her heart, right, to help with drainage. So if she's sitting, and she is an arm, I'm going to want to raise whatever I have up. Um, that, find that, now there. Um, I might have to put some pillows under it. I want to try to make her comfortable. If she's really going to be in this for a long time, she may want to lay down and prop her arm up. If I've got it on a leg, I'm propping that leg up. So now I've got red, blue, white over here. Blue. He's in, he, he's in a PT book. There he is, he's propped up, yep. right? Yep. And then I've got my dial here that I can control. This one doesn't allow me to pick. In your in your uh, book, it talks about on times and off times, and if it's lymphedema, it may be this, and if it's venous stasis, it may be this, on time and off time. This machine doesn't give you that, so you may just have to read your owner's manual. This one's gonna pump up the first chamber until it gets to the pressure you had it set at, and then it's gonna pump up the next one until it hits the pressure. It's gonna pump up the next one, it's gonna release it, and then it's gonna start over. <coughs> so I'm really pretty much done with her on this machine because I don't have all those extra controls. And is the pressure uniform? Um, it's it's Each. going to, yes, it's going to pump in the same pressure, but it should leave this one up while it pumps this one so this one doesn't pump stuff back down into her hand. Good job. So it should pump, 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 release. Pump, 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 pump release. It may take forever. This one is going to be real similar. This one is shaped like a foot. So I asked for her arm because I didn't want her... <coughs> her ankle and foot stick down the bottom of this because now I'm going to de develop this big swollen foot because it's just squeezing here. If it's squeezed everything down into her foot, I've probably not gotten where I wanted to go. So they do make foot ones, they make arm ones. If someone's doing this at home for like lymphedema, they may actually have a custom fit one that's smaller. This is enormous on her poor little tiny arm. So, I mean, it, 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 we haven't gotten close to where we're starting to get therapeutic, and she's been running a while. This one um, is got different sized holes, just like your pulse lavage did, so that you can't stick it in upside down. And it's the same thing. I'm dialing in pressures. So I don't have a fancy machine that allows me to change on times and off times and all that. I just get to decide how much pressure I'm going to apply to the person. And that's one you said the person never exceeds diastolic. I do not, yeah. Right. I'm, there may be instances where I will exceed diastolic and instances when I won't, but I won't ever exceed systolic. So if I'm going to do this on a person for a practical or for a clinic, I'm going to have to take their, take their blood pressure first, right? because mine's 100 and somebody else's might be 180 or my diastolic's going to be 60 and someone else's might be 100. And you're not going to want to pump me up to 100 just because I look like I'm older and I've probably got hypertension problems. Okay, that's it. Venus stasis or venous compression.